Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create dynamic EQ using re-EQ in Reaper. Now the idea of dynamic EQ is we can change the boost or cut of the EQ based on the signal being sent, or in this case, using a side chain. And this can be used in many different ways. To DS a vocal, cut out some low end on a really fat loop, or even cut out some mud on an acoustic guitar. I have a project in front of me here with an acoustic guitar with that problem. Let's hear it. So if you notice, there's a bit of mud in the low end, but it only happens on certain notes. So we don't want to cut the frequency the whole time, just on those problem notes. And we could do that with dynamic EQ. So let's set it up using re-EQ in Reaper. We'll go to the track effects right here and go to the Reaper effects and choose re-EQ. Then we'll remove all the bands except for one. I'll change this to a band filter and find the frequency that's jumping out. And we can kind of see it right over here. But like I said, if we cut this frequency, we're filtering it out for the whole performance, not just the notes that are jumping out. So it could sound too thin overall. So you can fix this with dynamic EQ, an EQ that changes based on how loud certain frequencies are. So the next thing we'll do is we'll duplicate this EQ. So select it, copy it, and then paste it. And then I'm going to rename the second one. Rename Effects Instance. And we'll rename it Sidechain. Just so we can remember what it's doing. We'll put it before the other one. Turn this one off. And then we're going to reverse what this does. So we can right click it. Choose to flip all the bands, and now we're boosting instead of cutting. But I'm going to change the type to be a band pass filter. So it's going to cut out all the frequencies that are not the problem frequencies. This bit really focuses on the problem frequencies. Now we're going to make this a side chain. So we'll go up over here to the plug and pin connector, and we're going to add more channels to this track. Right now it's coming in on one and two, and going out on one and two. Let's change it by adding channels to coming in on one and two, but going out three and four. So now we're not going to hear this EQ, but it's still working and we could use it as a side chain. So we could turn this one back on. We can click on the frequency right here or touch the gain as the last touched parameter, then go up here and choose parameter modulation. Then we could turn on the audio control signal or side chain to modulate the parameter. Right here, we'll switch the audio channel to B3 and 4 like we set up with our side chain EQ. Then we'll adjust the baseline right here. So it's not boosting or cutting. We'll change the attack to be fairly quick and the release. 
This is going to affect how quickly the dynamic EQ reacts. With a quick attack, it's going to cut or boost very quickly when the signal hits, and the release decides how quickly it stops reacting. So you can make it smoother with a longer release. Then this adjustment decides the range in which it reacts to over here. So let's bring it down a bunch. Notice it boosts the EQ. We want the opposite. So we'll switch the direction to negative, and now it should cut. Now it's going a bit too far. We can readjust that right here, or change the strength. The strength will decide how much it boosts or cuts. If we bring the strength all the way down, it won't adjust anything, but we could bring it back up to decide how far it moves. Again, we can make the release slower so it doesn't jump back as quickly, and it'll sound more natural. So now the notes that don't have a problem are not getting thinner. They're not having their EQ adjusted. Just the notes with too much low end mud. It's a very natural effect. Now let's try the same thing with a drum loop. I have a drum loop right here, and it sounds like this. Sounds pretty good, but the top end sounds a bit too aggressive on certain drum hits. So again, we could add EQ and cut out the top end, but that's going to affect the entire beat. If we use dynamic EQ, it could filter out just the most aggressive frequencies. So once again, we add an EQ, re-EQ, let's remove all these bands, we'll find the frequency that's annoying. Right about there sounds good, but it also makes it too dark. So we'll duplicate the EQ, copy and paste, rename this one, sidechain, put it before this one, and we'll boost this one instead. Flip the bands so it's boosting. And also, I'm going to add a high pass filter to cut out the low end and just keep the annoying frequencies. I'm also going to change the shelving to a band. This way we can focus in on the frequencies to trigger our dynamic EQ. That should work right there. And once again, we'll open up the plugin connector, we'll add more channels, and change it to go out three and four. Then we'll turn this back on, choose the frequency, turn on parameter modulation, audio control, side chain for three and four, put this back. So no gain or boost, change this to negative and make our adjustments.
And now you can notice, only when the frequencies are really loud in the drum loop, does it cut the top end. The rest of the time, it leaves it alone. Creating a more controlled and natural effect. Now you're probably thinking, this is a lot to set up, but we could save it so you don't have to do this every time. We can just right click over here, go to effects chains, and save it as an effects chain. I'll call it drum loop dynamic EQ. And let's delete the effect, put the channels back to two. And if we have a situation where a drum loop is too bright, we can just right click over here, go to effects chains, and choose drum loop dynamic EQ. And that opens up that effect ready to go. We can retweak it with the attack and the release, or the strength. and also readjust our sidechain. And we could save a different one for every use, like the acoustic guitar with de vocals, or a low-end drum loop that's jumping out in the sub-frequencies. Either way, dynamic EQ is very helpful for controlling frequencies in our productions. So that's pretty much it. That's how to create dynamic EQ in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.